I'm ready. Ready? I know, we're like... Bum, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Hey guys, it's Eric. And Adam. And today, we are going to tell our coming out stories. Yeah. Uh, we actually had a couple requests on Instagram and on YouTube to tell our uh, coming out stories. And uh, so we're doing it. Yeah. Yay. It's a little personal, so. Yeah. You can start. You can. came into the world first, so. So I'm going to tell two stories. I'm going to tell the very first time I came out and who I told. And then I want to tell how I came out to my parents. So the first person that I came out to was my best friend at the time, Johanna, who is still in my life and still one of my best friends. Um, it was in college. It was my freshman year. I had just gotten to college, didn't know anybody, and uh, you know I would always spend online uh, at night, every night with her, just chatting away. It was AOL, instant messenger, baby, yeah. It was just something that I had been weighing on my chest, and you know there were a couple times where I felt like I wanted, Ooh. I wanted to tell her but I didn't know how, and so I typed the words, I am gay, and I, and I didn't press enter, and I just kind of stared at the keyboard, and I did that whole like moment you see in the movies where you're like, no, ugh, ugh, I don't know, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should, and I pushed it, and then I like closed my eyes like this, and I was like, ah. and I looked at the screen, and it said, call me now. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she called me because I was like, I don't want to call her. So she called me and she just poured her love out to me and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. I'm so supportive of you. I am here to talk. Let's talk. And that kind of just, it steamrolled everything else in my life. And so uh, it was a couple months after that, that I came out to my family. How old were you? Uh, 18. 18. 18. Fast forward to a couple months later, I went down to San Diego all the time because I went to a, I went to school in Orange County, which was about an hour and a half north from San Diego, from where I live. And so I could always go down, and I always felt really awkward going down because I really felt like I was living one life at Chapman and then living another life in uh, San Diego and lying to my parents, and so. Every time I went, I was like, okay, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them. And I remember getting my tongue pierced once and was driving with my mom. My mom was like, what does that mean? Does that mean you're gay? Is that a gay thing? And I was like, oh, no, no, I am totally straight, mom. What are you talking about? And I was like, oh my God, she knows, she knows. And so it just felt like I had huh. to tell her, I had to tell her. And so uh, one time I was down there and I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to write a letter. Uh, my parents were separated at the time. They had been divorced. And so I said, I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to copy it word for word, clearly changing the word mom to dad. And I'm going to leave it in my mom's mailbox. And I'm going to leave it in my dad's mailbox. I have been actually asking for the letter uh, from my mom for quite some time. And I just got it from her last year. And... Here it is! And I'm gonna read so it to you. Wild. We actually Isn't spent some time looking for this. It was in some old uh Yeah, old I thought I had lost it. And I was that... like, no. Yeah. But it just says mom. And this is the thoughts of an 18-year-old uh who is coming out to her mom. Uh coming her coming out to her mom. To her Oh my god. <laughs> I just, you were like, I, I'm I was a like, lady. wait, I said, I said something <laughs> wrong. Coming out to his mom. <laughs> um Mom, I have no idea where to begin. This is really hard for me to do because I know you expect great things from me and love me with all your heart like a mother does. I have held these feelings inside of me for so long because they have been kept hidden for so long uh, and they are beginning to break free. I feel as though I am living two different lifestyles from the one I am off to college and the one here in San Diego. Whenever I come down to San Diego, I feel like I'm living a lie to you. It is so hard and I hate doing it. You always taught me not to lie and to always speak the truth with your heart. Here it goes. I am seeing someone right now. This someone is male. Homosexuality is mentioned in the Bible only a few times, but lying is mentioned all throughout. 
I cannot live a lie anymore to myself, to my friends and family. I am gay. I want to be, I don't want to be a disappointment to you or to scare you away. I love you so much that is no matter that no matter what your decision is to act upon this, I will not change my feelings for you. Which is so interesting that I said that to her when really it should be her saying it to me. You know? Yeah. Because I said I don't want to be a disappointment to you or scare you away. I love you so much that no matter what your decision is upon this, it'll change my feelings. It won't change my feelings for you. Like maybe I was kind of hoping that she would say the same thing to me and that's why I wrote it. I don't know. Uh, I have always had these feelings and in my childhood and bringing up or and the way you raised me has nothing to do with this. No one could have asked for a more caring and loving family as the one you have provided for me. Please understand my position and not and that this is the way that I am and God has made me this way. If you love God and his ways, then you should love me and my ways. I just threw it in her face. Um, I have looked for myself these past six months and have finally found the lifestyle that I like. The first person that I told was to Johanna. Uh, she has been there for me since day one and I love her for it. I told Kelly, who was another really good friend at uh, school at the time, uh, about the middle of September and shortly after uh, was open to the rest of my campus. Now you understand why I live two different lives, and now you understand why it's so hard for me to come home. Uh, I just hope that I, I just hope and pray that you will still love me as you always have. I'm sorry to have put this in a letter, but I think it's best for you to gather your thoughts together, and then when we talk next, we can really talk. So whenever you are ready, you can call me. This is so hard, and many nights I have cried and prayed to God that you would understand. I am so, I am still your son, and and haven't changed. I have just found myself and want to share my happiness with the people I love. I love you so much. Love, Eric. Put it in uh, in her mailbox, drove to my dad's, put it in his mailbox, and just like waited. <laughs> Which was pretty torturous. Who'd you hear from pretty first? Torturous. Uh, I heard from my dad first. He checked his mail first. Did he call that day that you dropped it off? He actually did, yeah. Oh, wow. He called that night. Uh, and he said, I love you, son. You know, he was very supportive. And my mom actually didn't call until the next day, like 3 or 4 p.m. because clearly she wouldn't have checked the mail until then because the mailman wouldn't have come. So yeah. I was living a torturous morning <laughs> waiting for her to like call. I was like, why hasn't my mom called? Why? Um, and she called and, you know, it took my mom a little longer to come to terms with it. Uh, she really... She put it on herself and she felt really guilty about it. And, you know, at first she blamed herself. Um, she bought books of like, I remember reading a book when I came, or finding a book in one of her bookshelves that said, your son is gay, now what? So she was really trying I to- I love that one. The sequel's <laughs> really good too, part two. So she really was trying to find, you know, some reasoning and some, um, I guess just some peace of mind for herself that you know it was not her fault um so but now everything is great and she those hard times definitely built a better relationship and yeah that was the coming up story so yeah is it my turn now yeah it's your turn wonderful so for my coming out story i grew up in missouri so it was quite um a religious place and a religious upbringing. I was uh, confirmed in the Catholic Church. Yeah, and I actually scoured through a bunch of old messages on my Facebook and I had one that I sent to my best friend, who's still uh, one of my best friends, Jenna, and this was in 2006. I would have been 18. So, it's a really long message and I won't read the whole thing because it goes off track a lot. My ADHD is probably like bam, 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 bam. <laughs> but um, a couple of the things are, so I suppose you could say I am bi because I like the chicas. So even then I couldn't even say gay. And then I say technically I quite like who I am and I am confident now. But that flaw takes over everything else and makes me hate everything about me because I think being gay is horrible. Being, or because sometimes gay people die because of what they are. I've prayed about it quite a lot and would do anything to be normal. 
but nothing has changed. It's quite sad, really. I just don't want to be attracted to the same sex. It's just wrong. So, I will say I don't believe any of what I just read now. Um, I think that's a lot of the surroundings and environment I was in at the time making me feel this way and believing that it was right and true. Um, yeah, which is sad. So with Jenna, she's the only one that I actually like said anything regarding sexuality to. Uh, all my other friends, I just would talk about boys or something like that, like, and it would be quite nonchalant. Um, so I didn't like really come out to anybody else, I guess. Um, yeah, and people just, I guess once I said I was bisexual to her, I was like, okay, cool, so I can just talk about whoever in front of people. Um, but because I was doing my music career for my early 20s, I felt that I wouldn't really be marketable, I guess, if I was gay. Um, so in my first, I think my first music video, I have a um, like a, a whole storyline with one of my best friends, Ashley, and we're like lovers and there's friction because the song's called Friction, all this stuff. And I remember some of the YouTube comments, people would post and be like, why is he dancing with a girl? Why is it a girl <laughs> that's in this? But I would read that stuff and be like, oh my God, like what the crap? Like, no. And so, but I like, I wouldn't ever actually say it about myself. I couldn't say I was gay until I was 25. Like I couldn't actually physically say the words. Um, people would, even I talked to my best friends, I couldn't physically say the words because there was just so much self-loathing because of it. I get like, because of my whole upbringing and all that stuff, I just couldn't accept it for myself. Um, and for me, it wasn't really until I met Eric that I was like, I can be loved with like who I am and what I am. So yeah, so then I was like, all right, yeah, I'm gay. Like, and I'm happy to be gay because, hello, have you seen my Well, husband? tell the story of how you um, <laughs> came out. Oh yeah, to, to my your parents. parents. I mean, it was a little. Yeah, well, and there was a, there was a time during my music career, uh, I had a show back at Kansas City. It was Kansas City Pride. And um, it was my first like hometown show. And so after the show, my mom and dad like sat me down. And they were like, so we have a question. Um, what do you want us to say when people ask if you're gay? Because uh, a few people asked that after the show today or during the show. And I was just like, uh, you don't have to perform at one of those events uh, and be gay. I probably said it sassy like that too. I'm like, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm not gay. They're yeah. Like, okay, so like, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> um, but for my parents, how I told them, it was about five months into Eric and I dating, and we were moving in together. We were going to move in together. And so I called up my mom, and I think the whole conversation, this is how the whole conversation went. I was like, I'm moving into a new place with my partner. That's it. And, uh, and she was like, Wait, 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 wait. You're moving out of your current place into a new place. And you have a partner. And you're moving in with that partner. And then she, I think she did the whole protective mom thing. And she was like, like, do you feel like this is going to work out? Like that whole well, And the partner is male. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. surprise. But I like, I did it really nonchalantly. I was like, oh, I'm moving in uh, to a new place with my partner. And that was the first time I ever said anything about it to my parents. And it was, I think it was the next day or two days after that. It wasn't long after that phone call with my mom and dad that I was talking to my mom again. And I was over at Eric's at that time. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm over at Eric's. And she's like, he's there. I was like, yeah. Do you want to talk to him? She's like, I do. And so then they talked for like 45 minutes and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh yeah, we, we became best friends after uh, that. Seriously. I was like, hey, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm moving in with your son. Everything's gonna be great, don't worry. Yeah, and they, they had a full-on conversation. She was getting to know him and all this stuff, and I'm just like, okay, this is lovely and all. And in but... reality, I was like, totally shaking, because yeah. I was nervous. Yeah, of course. It was a... Well, I was probably nervous too, because I'm like, what is she gonna You just came out to ask? your family. She's gonna be super protective, and... 
but I remember expected it. I remember the whole time they were having the conversation. I was nervous because I didn't know what she was going to ask him. But I think even more so, I was just bored because I'm like, my God, they're talking for 45 minutes. What? <laughs> do you, do you, like, should I go and get like lunch yeah. somewhere and come back? Like, do you guys need a moment? It was a long time. It was a but, good conversation, though. Yeah, but um, I think with my parents, they kind of. Um, it wasn't a shock to them at all. We'll we'll say that because <laughs> as a music artist, I only performed really at gay clubs, pride events. Uh, I had songs with lyrics like, I need you up inside of me, so it hinted. Yeah, so I don't think they were shocked at all, and I've asked my mom later, and she's like, no, we knew. I'm like, of course you did, like, yeah. yeah. We all have our own ways of doing it, and I think no way is the wrong way. I just think you definitely have to um, be comfortable with yourself because it just makes you it makes you feel better when you are comfortable yeah. at that moment when you're like okay this is right I feel comfortable with myself enough to let the world know and it it may take others longer than it does for other people when for me I like my my friends when I was 23 24 some of my best friends they were saying like oh like some, a couple of them were gay and they were like, just like come out because it, it's so much better. You'll feel so much better. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I like, I can't like, I had a so everyone, that to me too. I like, think everyone, urging me, just saying, so anything to tell us? So yeah, my friend's gay, you like, but they like were telling me to like come out to my parents and all this stuff. And I'm just like. I'm not ready. So I think like everybody does have their own journey as far as like Absolutely. when they accept themselves and all that. So yeah, clearly, cause ours are different. I came out when I was like 25 to my parents and you 18, so. But now I hear people coming out when they're like 13. Oh my 14, God, yeah. Even earlier. I know some people that came out at like 12. I'm like, so props crazy. to you. Cause when I was 12, I yeah. have no idea like who I was. So that was our coming up stories. Um, some are more difficult than the ones that we told, definitely. I have a lot of friends who have had more difficult times, more unaccepted parents. And um, yeah, I, all I can say to the people who are afraid to come out, um, it is such a lift off your shoulders when, when you do it. Uh, no matter if it's um, people are unaccepting, you're gonna feel better about yourself when you do it. And just make sure the time is right. And that's my advice. Yeah, and I think for me, I already had a good support system with my friends that knew. And so telling other people when I had them to fall back on if anything were to happen was made it easier for me to like yeah. being with you made it easier to tell my parents because I'm like, well at this point I don't even care what you think yeah. about it because I have Eric, so. Yeah. And there's a saying uh, that we get to choose our family. You know, we are here to support each other and you will always have the LGBTQ community uh, to rely on and to uh, grab support from. So we're here for you guys. So if you guys need support, please reach out. We are here. We will listen. And uh, Or if you're not LGBTQ and you just want to chat about your childhood, then go ahead and leave a comment and right. let us know. <laughs> we're here for you. We're here for everybody. So. so make sure you subscribe because like today's video, it was just a random day and we decided to post it. Uh, so make sure you get those notifications turned on. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below, like we said, and we'll see you soon. Three!